Now, the Central Bank of Nigeria has published an updated list of approved bureaus of change operators in the country. Now, the list titled Approved BDCs was made available on the CBN's website on Tuesday, July 18, 2023. Notably, the licenses of 2,698 BDCs have been revoked, according to the document. The number of BDC operators had experienced uh, substantial growth, increasing from 74 in 2005 to about 5,689 in 2021. However, the Central Bank of Nigeria reduced the number to 2,991. And this is at the backdrop of data which indicates that on Thursday, the Naira appreciated against the dollar, exchanging at 768 Naira, 16 Kobo at the investors and exporters window. Now, amidst applause, some individuals are concerned about the lack of established structures to ensure the success of its policies. That's why on the show, joining me from Lagos, Nigeria, I have Ola Dikwajai, Head, Fixed Income and Foreign Exchange, Chapel Hill, Denham, on the show. Thank you so much for um, dropping by. Yeah, thank you very much for having me this morning. So now, the CBN published an updated list of BDC operators revoking the licenses of about of over 2,000, as it were, and retained over 2,000, almost 3,000. Now, there was no comprehensive detail as to why some of these licenses were revoked. But what could have been the reason, or what could have been responsible for this, and what criteria do central banks use when it comes to determining which dealer's licenses would be revoked or renewed? Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, and just like what you mentioned, um, there, there was no uh, uh, compressing details of the reasons why uh, some of those uh, um, BTCs uh, licenses were, were revoked. But um, if you look at it critically, I think one of the reasons is that um, the CBN is just trying to sanitize that, uh, that uh, segment of the market, pending when uh, they start to actually uh, uh, meeting the need of the retail invest, uh, retail need uh, through that conduit. Uh, uh, just like what you actually uh, highlighted, that we've seen astronomic uh, movement um, in terms of uh, people actually registering to actually own a BDC business. And uh, one of the reasons why that's actually more prevalent was just because of uh, what we've been seeing in the FX market. So a lot of people are now using the opportunity to actually uh, use that to actually uh, get allocation from the central bank while using it to actually meet um, their own personal need or their own personal request. And as a result of that, um, uh, we got to a level where we are not feeling the impact of BDC like that in the market. And that's one of the reasons why uh, central bank ended up actually making them uh, ineffective or not using them as, uh, as one of the distributors or intermediaries to actually meet the needs of the people. So, and I think, um, my own view is that I think CBN is trying to sanitize that uh, the his house now uh, while preparing to actually launch back by actually using BDC as uh, another, maybe one of their intermediary to actually use that to distribute efforts and meet uh, people that have retail needs. All right, so then what implication do you think this would have on the BDC operators, the operations, and of course the Forex markets? Yeah, if it's just a bit before that we have seen that uh, uh, people actually patronize BBC than, uh, than any of uh, the, the DMEs. Uh, because it's easier for you to actually walk into a BDC or call a BDC office and uh, get to transact, get your FX and get out of there. And, uh, and, I, and I think uh, that's one of the reasons why they are still very, very relevant in our market as we speak. So uh, the decision on for, for the CB, uh, CBN to have you revoke the licenses of some of the uh, BDC. If you see what happened in the market, you notice that Mark Naira actually appreciated uh, on, on that particular day. And, uh, and I guess the reason uh, can be attributed to the view that people also have uh, the view that the, C the CBN now wants to start allocating effort to the market, to the BDC. So it's not about. Uh, uh, revoking the license is just about the ones that are available. How effective are they going to be? If they are going to start doing the job very well, I, I, I don't think we need uh, that much uh, uh, number of BDC to actually operate effectively in Nigeria. You don't need 5,000 BDC to actually operate effectively in Nigeria. If you have 1,000 BDC that are very effective, they will do the job and, and, and uh, they will actually function appropriately.
Okay, so what if it, uh, the Nigerian uh, Naira equates to an uh, appropriate level in terms of an appreciable value level um, with other currencies? Do you think that the BC, uh, BDC operators will still be relevant? Do you think still they will still be in business? Yes, I think they should because uh, uh, what we have seen now is that uh, it's been very difficult for the bank to actually serve the retail end of the market. Uh, people that actually want to travel, PTAs and the like, people are finding it very difficult to get allocations. So but with, the, uh, uh, with the BDC also in the picture, uh, we've seen more of a seamless um, um, uh, um, um, access to some of these uh, of assets to FX. Um, the, even though, during the period where we have the uh, Nara 360, the BC, BDC were there and they were doing the job very well. And I even think that that's the best time for you to, to have them around and get the job job. So we don't need to, all of us don't need to crowd the bank to actually be able to actually access FX. You can actually go to any of the BDC that are around you and get to actually access FX. So, and also, we also, also have to have the, uh, get it from this perspective that aside, um, other uh, the normal um, FX that you, they actually get to actually um, allocate maybe as a result of the um, distribution from Central Bank. They also get autonomous funding, uh, so they also source FX from autonomous uh, uh, avenues as well to actually get uh, flows that is sold to the market. So BDC are still very much relevant. What I feel that uh, the Central Bank just need to do is to put a lot of controls in place to actually ensure that. Um, they are not working against the policies and they are not working against the progress of the central bank. All right. So now I'm talking about the unification of the exchange uh, rates. Uh, do you think that the CBN is losing the battle of harmonizing the rates because we see the convergence uh, widening again? Or is it that um, now that the Naira appreciated against the dollar exchanging at 768 Naira uh, at the I and E window, we still need to wait some more to see how um, appreciation will come to the value? I think it's too early to call. It will be too early for us to call now um, because um, we just harmonized the exchange window and you expect uh, the volatility that we are seeing currently. Uh, what I think uh, the central bank needs to do is uh, what uh, we just highlighted earlier. Um, most of what is putting pressure on the parallel market is the demand from people that are actually traveling. People that are going on some money, they, they need access to FX. And uh, when you don't get it, uh, you just need to buy it at whatever price you can. Um, some of these people cannot go to the bank and buy the IU window. They have not been able to, they cannot have access to that window. So speak. Even when you actually um, go to your bank, I'm not sure you can get allocation. So, the result of the, that, a lot of them are going to the parallel market to actually get uh, to meet their demand. And that is one of the things that's putting pressure on, on, on FX as to speak. And I get that's one of the reasons why CBA is trying to have quickly sanitize the BDC um, uh, industry as well. So as to know who or who can who they can work with to actually help to actually restore sanity into that that particular market. As we speak, the central bank need to actually ensure that there is flow of funds into that segment of the market because a lot of people who need to um, need maybe to travel to pay for school fees and some other little little things. When you don't get it done through the CBN, you actually uh, through the banks, you end up going to the final market to actually get it done. And that's exactly what is putting pressure on the market on the market. So I I, I feel it'd be too early for us to make a call and say, oh, they're actually using the battle. We just feel that there's just one or two things that they need to do that will create uh, that will bring normalcy to the market. All right, a lot of people, you'll agree with me that for every policy or reform, there are usually no absolute wins or positives. And we have seen that the impact of the pump uh, price of premium motor spirit in the country has um, eaten into the pulse of so many Nigerians. So, do you think that these policies are, are being too drastic, as some have speculated, by this current administration? And the citizens are the ones that would have to suffer more um, from these policies. So, do you think they're a bit too harsh? For me, I don't think the policies. But what I think is that the response of the part of the government is what is harsh. Uh, the policy is what we just need to do. We just need to take that decision now. If you don't take the decision now, we are throwing the line of Venezuela, we are throwing the line of Greece, we are throwing the line of Argentina. So for us taking the decision now, it is the right thing to do. But it's just the reaction of the government around the palliative. That's the key thing. You can't take such an enormous decision without actually putting some measures in place. 
to minimize or reduce the impact on the people. As we speak, I, I, I don't think we should, by now, we should still be talking about, oh, what is the government doing around the minimum wages? Because I feel by now we should know what is the new minimum wages, so as to use that to actually push the effects on, on people. And at the same time, also, I feel that the state governments also have a lot of work to do in this instance. There are many things that you need to do. You need to do put a, a put transportation a system in place that would help to reduce the impact on people. The key thing is that with the increase the, or the removal of the poor subsidy, aside the um, the indirect effect that we start seeing or that we start that we have been seeing on the price of food and all, all other things, there's a direct effect that people are already seeing cost of transportation. And if we don't do that or stop that quickly. People, it will get worse on people, and uh, we might not. We may end up finding ourselves where we don't actually want to. If you look at the policy, the policy is great, as we speak. If you if you know very well, um, the FARC allocation for the month of June was close to two trillion. It means that the government, government has enough money now, now to actually spend. Uh, although we saw yesterday that um, the president has said, okay, they want to create infrastructure fund, so they are setting aside one trillion from that amount that will go into infrastructure fund. Great, the very nice one. But at the same time, we also need to actually find a way to ameliorate the issue immediately. We have to find a way to put more money into the hand of people so that people can actually get more money to spend and so that the effect of the new house subsidy will not be so strenuous on, on, on Nigeria. All right, but um, Oladipo, in the light of um, rising inflation, high cost of living, do you think that um, uh, increasing wages would actually be the most appropriate thing? Because some people have said that what is needed for the government to do at this time is for the money is being gotten now, for the money is being saved now, it should be plunged, or it should be plugged rather, into um, resuscitating the um, refineries, as it were. So that would be, uh, that would actually help in uh, reducing the cost of um, processing the crude oil, that's refining the crude oil, and probably also leading to other attendant effects whereby the prices of, um, the price of pure motor spirits and the prices of goods, cost of living, cost of production, everything would drastically reduce. So don't you think that plugging these funds in investments that would um, affect the people indirectly would be more better than increasing their salaries with inflation still rising and at the end of the day people still get to not feel the effect of the monies that are, that are being added to their salaries? So oh, let's look at it from this part. I get the angle at which you're looking at it, which is also a very nice angle. But to now look at it critically, as we speak, the real income of people has dropped drastically. It means that the value of what your your income can actually consume has dropped, and you cannot consume as much as what you used to consume. The end goal of this is that when you don't put more money in the hand of people, the end goal is that uh, we might find a lot of people going back to the unemployment market. Because what that simply means is that people will not be patronizing most of the manufactured products in Nigeria as much as what the way you are also patronizing it. So it means that the, the production of some of those companies will drop. When production drops, you ended up seeing a situation by most of those companies will have to take a decision to actually reduce the employment, uh, the number of people employed to actually work in such company. And at the end of the day, what you are doing is that you are throwing more people into the labor market. So what I'm saying in essence is this. When you increase salary, it's not that you are using all funds that you have saved to actually increase salary. What you are doing is that you are minimizing the effect of the poor subsidy removal on people. Imagine someone that is on a minimum wage of 30000 And can you think, do you think that 30000 can even take that person? Can actually take that person just for one week again? I doubt that will be. So as a result of that, the government also on their part need to work around that. You need to increase the minimum wage. That is very bad. That isn't very key. You can't do that. You can't, you can't but do that as we speak. I also agree to the fact that, oh, we need to actually now um, do infrastructure, improve the refinery. And the refinery that we are even talking about, if you look at the potential of the refinery, we are expecting that refinery to come on up. To come online by by the end of uh, before the end of Q3, which what that simply means is that what's already in progress and they're almost at the tail end of resuscitating that refinery. And for me, I feel that we need to actually help people out of this situation as much as we are creating infrastructure. As much as we are creating infrastructure, you also need to put food on people's table because if you don't do that, what will happen? 
things that you would also need to start fighting um, insecurity in the country because you ended up seeing people that are actually deeply employed. But because the money they are earning is not enough to take them, they might actually be able to go into other criminal activities. Okay. And we don't want you to want to find ourselves in such a situation. Okay, well, no doubt uh, there's a need for the government to come up with uh, support structures for its policies to um, allow that be a cushioning for all the implementations that have been made. Thank you yeah. so much, um, Ola Dipwa Jai, Head of Fixed Income and Foreign Exchange at Chapel Hill, Denham, for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you.